Your Excellency, welcome to CNBC. It's great to see you in person once again. And congratulations on COP28 being awarded to the UAE. Dr. Sultan al Jaber, when he opened the ADAPEC conference, essentially said that the world has been sleepwalking into an energy crisis. What is your greatest concern at the moment? Are we talking inflation? Are we talking about another wave of COVID? No, I think, I think uh, first of all, we are grateful to see uh, as many of industry experts coming to back to Abu Dhabi, it's really refreshing, uh, and keeping uh, keeping the uh, the safety uh, of, of and the distance uh, uh, in mind. But the concern today is uh, we are moving into a transition that is needed, and there is big assumption that the supply is always going to be there, and no investment is needed. Some are saying but the supply is always going to be there. And that contradicts with any fact, because uh, the fact says that if you don't invest in the uh, hydrocarbon value chain, you will lose around five to 8% on a natural decline. And that's uh, scary. You're talking about five million to maybe eight million uh, losing on the supply if we don't invest. So w while we are committed, and, and coming out of uh, COP28 uh, commitments, we need to ensure that those countries who are responsible for the supply are getting assisted with the right resources financially to keep the investments to ensure that we don't have a supply crunch in the future. How quickly could we see a supply crunch in your view? Well, uh, if we don't invest as, as of this year, it's, uh, we're going to see it. I'll give you an example. In OPEC Plus, we have, uh, we have uh, 20 plus countries. And where we started two years ago, when we, have, we used that reference, many of our, uh, of, of our member states are not able to produce. That's why the conformity levels goes to 115%. And, and, and that is, that is uh, I think, a first alarm. So you lost, you lost that volume. And unless we come and invest, it's not going to come back. And we will lose more as we're moving to next year. So we need, and also it's the same an, uh, analogy in the shale oil producers. Where was the capacity of the US and where it is today? We still have a million to come back or about. And I'm not mentioning the other producers as well. So if you put all of these together and you look at the demand curve going up, soon we will see, we will see an issue if we don't come and spend. So we are encouraging the spending. We will invest as UAE because we are a committed supplier and we are committed to, uh, to go to the 5 million barrels capacity by the year 20, 2030, and we'll do it. But is that going to be enough by that year if the others are not doing their job? That's the one. You're going to have to remain nimble. But speaking of the United States, the latest Washington Post poll says that 41% of Americans um, are approving of the president. So essentially over half of the country disapproves of Joe Biden's performance right now on a plethora of issues. Of course, a big part of that is energy prices. Is OPEC willing to help the president out and the American people as well? Well, uh, we are a technical, we're looking at a technical, uh, we're a technical organization, not a political organization, first uh, and, and most. Second, uh, let's be, let's look at the numbers. All of the independent sources, including the EIA, are suggesting a surplus of the supply over the demand in the first quarter and building up in the second quarter and so on. So if all of the technical numbers from those experts who are independent, not OPEC, are suggesting that what OPEC is doing now will end up to, to, to a surplus in, 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 the, in the first quarter, that doesn't mean, that should not suggest that we do something uh, contrary to that. Plus, it's so difficult when you, get, when you get all of those countries together to come and tell them, we're going to do it for a political reason. They're not going to listen. And we're not talking about a one country here. We're talking about 20 plus countries, unanimous decisions. And it's, it's not easy to, uh, to come and, and, and do it if it's but not But would logical. you be willing to take 
a call from the president on prices? No, on oil? no. I think I think we have made it clear. Uh, the United States is a very important ally, and uh, we uh, we we are working with them in so many fronts, as uh, as well as China, as well as well as India. I received calls from different ministers uh, calling for doing something, but we shared with them the data. And I think, I think uh, unless uh, something uh, extraordinary happened, yeah. uh, they, they, we will follow the technical, we will follow the facts, and we are collaborating, sharing our data. Does it surprise you that he hasn't tapped into his own oil and gas industry at this point? Sorry? Does it surprise you that the president hasn't decided to go to his own oil and gas industry at this point? And encourage well, I think, I think we, 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 have to be, we have to do it all, as I mentioned. The issue is not a short term. I'm not worried about the short term. I think we will see softening as we move to the first quarter. Uh, so I would encourage people to calm, trust us. Uh, it's, going to, it's going to soften in the first quarter. And we will start to see build up in the inventories in, in 2022. That's what the experts said. Yeah. And we agree with them in, in OPEC. And we're going to see that. That is not my worry and, or my concern. My biggest concern is medium to long term. Because hearing what many countries are calling, uh, calling upon their shareholders, uh, or, or their shareholders calling upon the company's management to stop or limit the investments, that is, I think, is uh, troublesome. If we are serious about supplying the transition, and we are all convinced of our commitments, and we have to do it. Yeah. But there is a technology question, there is a supply assumption, that we need to make sure that it's a reality. Saudi Arabia, several months ago when we spoke back in July, you guys had a major disagreement with members of OPEC, Saudi Arabia and Russia. Why do you have to be controversial? <laughs> <laughs> it's my job. Where are we today? Have we patched things up? No, no, Is there aligned. an understanding? We're fully aligned. Uh, I don't think it was disagreement with Saudi Arabia. Uh, we, are, uh, we are always aligned as, as producers. Uh, the uh, UAE. Because it was a pretty big spat. I mean, to yeah. get out to get out of the room. But the media got it out of context. There, were, the disagreement was with the whole group, and the disagreement was on the same issue that we are talking about today, yeah. which is there will be an, a, a requirement for additional, mm -hmm. for additional uh, uh, volumes or additional supply. There was a concern about some are not going to be able to, uh, to, uh, to, to produce uh, as much as, as, as they were willing to produce when we walked into the agreements due to the facts that are changing. We have seen, I have seen that and I have predicted that we, moving to next year, mm -hmm. we will have some issues. We ironed that, we agreed on, uh, on the distribution. Mm -hmm. But I think all of what we have agreed on, the increase in Saudi Arabia, UAE, and others who can, is going to help the situation, is going to help what the, the, uh, the uh, major consuming nations are calling upon us. If we, don't do, if we didn't do what, what I suggested or what we suggested in UAE, we would have a, have a, a bigger problem. We predicted it, yeah. I can say, uh, and, and we, uh, we have solved it. But we need this group to work together uh, as, as, uh, as one body, and we need to work on logic. We have a responsibility toward the market, and we will always do the right thing because, because this group uh, have done much better than expected compared to what is happening in the gas or in the coal. The last thing the world wants to see is chaos happening to the to the to the oil industry like it happened to the gas uh, and and those huge uh, price spikes that we have seen iran right now there are conversations of course restarting on the potential jcpoa kind of agreement as a gulf arab country the uae obviously is talking to iran saudi arabia now is in talks with iran what's your expectation on a timeline for a potential deal there, because obviously that has implications for the markets, a return of Iranian crude. Well, first of all, Iran is a member of, of OPEC. They have the right, uh, once things are, or sanctions are removed, to come back. They, uh, they, will, uh, they will come. We will see, engage 
what is their capacity uh, and an ability to produce at that stage. But Iran, like other countries, have been given special status. When they come back, like when Libya came back, they've been given, they've been given uh, an opportunity. I think you put Iran in, you put the additional capacity we have, the, show, the medium to long term would require more volumes than that. Uh, just looking for, for the, for, from the facts that I mentioned to you. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we would need to do more investments in all of the countries to ensure that we are, we are keeping pace with the demand in the future. Your Excellency, just before I let you go, when I was on stage with Vladimir Putin just a few weeks ago, I asked him, are we going to see $100 oil? And he didn't rule it out. Will OPEC allow that to happen, oil prices at 100 well, we will do the best we can not to have uh, a, a, a suffering on the, on the consuming nations, uh, suffering their economy. We, we, are, we have no business or interest in just increasing the price to have a slow economical growth, world economical growth. To the contrary, we are keen on the prosperity of the world economy and to go back, especially we are moving from a crisis to back to normal, hopefully. So I can assure you that I haven't seen any argument suggesting otherwise than supporting the, 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 uh, the, demand, uh, the demand growth. And we know that we will have to do whatever we can to sustain that balance in the market. But the medium term, the long term, tells us that we need to invest. And the size of investment is huge 600 to 700 billion dollars every year we're not seeing that and we've been since 2016 saying the same argument putting the same argument saying the same thing we need to see investments we need to see investments what we have seen in cope discouragement of investment is really scary and we think we should be vocal we should speak about that risk because if that risk happened the consumers will be hurt and the consumers uh, will have all the right to, uh, to, 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 to be given in affordable prices. We cannot do it if we don't have the supply. It seems as if OPEC has really managed, and OPEC Plus really, have, are managing to recast the narrative in a sense to a much more user-friendly um, vibe, if you will. Does it bother you when the president calls you a cartel? It's really unfair. I mean, I mean that word is really unfair, and it does not take into consideration the efforts, the sacrifices that we put together. Uh, and 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 I don't think I don't think it's 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 going to be sustainable that word. We've been open than any other organization in the planet. We've been sharing our data. We've been using the independent. And, and abandoning, just using our, our, our own uh, country reporting. Yeah. We're using the independent. We don't know what else we can do <laughs> to, be, to, be, to be called other something, something fair. So I, this, we, we don't look at what they call us. Yeah. We have a duty, we have a responsibility, and we will continue doing the right thing, no matter what they say. Your Excellency, it's great to have you on the program. Thanks so much for joining us.